Open the digital asset news to get top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and bring it on a bite sized piece. Today, we've got fa more fantastic news. Uh, you can't get better than this if you are an XRP Army member. US court dismisses claims against XRP also. Bitcoin drops by 7% in the hour after breaking $12,000. Like I tell you, um, I'm not a TA person, but I can see this coming. On top of the $12,000 bump for Bitcoin, there was exchange outages during Bitcoin crashes. How amazing is that? It's like that's never happened before. Also, Zeus Capital doubles down on chain link pump and dump claims, and a fellow YouTuber is struck down in, in their prime. I'll be going over that in detail. But first, take a look at the market. So it is August 2nd. It is around noon, high noon Texas time. And uh, yeah, Bitcoin took a little bit of a slide, a little bit of a correction. Look, you can't keep going up forever, even though we'd all love that to happen. But Bitcoin's down 3.5%. But for the whole week, 16.1%. And that, my friends, is awesome. Ethereum, 3.6%, almost hitting that $400 uh, point. It actually did touch. I think it went to like 411 So I'm pretty happy with that. And the big gainer of the day, XRP. 3.4%, almost hitting 30 cents. And maybe, just maybe, that court case had something to do with it. So Tether, watch out. Not just kidding. Tether's Tether. Bitcoin Cash, Cardano down, uh, but it is in the sixth spot. So that is interesting. Uh, Bitcoin SV, some reason in the top 10, don't understand why, uh, down 7%. Bitcoin Cash down 7.5%, so sure. Uh, Chainlink up, 9% uh, for the week, 835, almost going to hit its all-time high. So that tells you something. Crypto.com doing pretty well. And, uh, well, not really, down 2 per 6. Uh, but everything else is pretty much the same. Either a little red or a little green. Mostly red, though. Not so fantastic. But, hey, look, uh, that is cryptocurrency. And I got to tell you, um, it feels good just to have done the plan. And the plan for me was just to dollar cost average, when all the markets were really bad and they were just dropping like a stone, I did not care and I just kept doing the plan. If, uh, if that's you, let me know in the comments section. And if you stumbled, still let me know. I'd like to hear what's going on. Anyhow, let's break in the top story. So first up, this is huge. This is huge. This is, this is one of two things that needs to happen for Ripple and XRP. And, that, and this, the first thing is the U.S. court needs to dismiss this case, which they did today. The second thing is for the government to come out and say, also that this that xrp is not a security and is just currency like it should be so what's going on let's take a look so if you didn't know there was investors that came forward they had invested like a long time ago i can't remember 2014 2015 somebody correct me in the comments section but it was a while ago and they said that uh hey xrp is a scam or not a scam it was a uh, security and they were not informed of that and they sued brad garlinghouse and ripple themselves and uh this took a long time to to come out of the pipe but it was weird because they put in like a I mean, a lot of money. I, I know it was over 100K. I want to say 300K. And if they just would have held on, they would have made a boatload of dough. But they just, they sold too fast and they got salty. And they're like, hey, you didn't tell me. And uh, I need someone to, to babysit me. So uh, I'm going to start a uh, lawsuit. And here we are. So it states here, the investors insist that Ripple, sh that Ripple should have made a formal application to the U.S. Securities Exchange Commission or SEC for the cryptocurrency XRP to become a security. Are you out of your mind? Why would they go to the SEC and go, hey, could you classify us as a security? Sounds like a fantastic plan, genius. But uh, I digress. According to court findings published online by Law360, the court made the following verdict. And I just want to remind everybody that today is Sunday. This happened eight hours ago. So um, I don't think courts are open on Sunday, but I think this happened a while ago and they just got wind of it. So here we are. But uh, this is what was stated. The court found that the lead plaintiff failed to provide the necessary evidence in the courtroom to support multiple claims regarding XRP's non-security status. Brad Garlinghouse's personal holdings and monetary intentions, XRP's sales strategy, as well as the company's software products. And I got to tell you, I did not think this was going to be dismissed this early. I thought it was going to go through the whole process and they're going to have to go through discovery. They're going to have to go through depositions. They're going to have to go through the whole thing and, you know, expert witnesses and all those things, which I had to go through for my lawsuit, but good for Ripple. They didn't have to. I mean, again, even if you win a case, you lose a case. And uh, I'm glad Ripple didn't have to go through that. So moving on, the Northern California District Court also said the plaintiff failed to offer the factual allegations needing to show that Ripple and Mr. Garlinghouse's statements were false when made. And that's pretty much it. And it talks about some other things about um, MoneyGram. But that's not the big story. The big story is this. And this is what, if, if you hold that, uh, or if you're in the XRP Army, which, same thing, you are waiting for this case. And this case is huge. And I believe that's a good reason why we're seeing this nice little healthy pump 
for XRP. I expect it to go much higher uh, when everybody learns this, when we're out of Sunday and people aren't at church or with family or something like that. Uh, and they find this out, I think it's gonna pump big time. Do I think you should buy? <laughs> I'm not gonna say that. I'm just saying that once this case and it, it breaks all over the place, should be pretty big. Now remember, you might know what's going on, but not everybody knows what's going on. So um, I think this should happen, but we will see. Anyhow, let's move on. Next up, somebody asked me about this question in the comments. They go, hey, can you tell me about you know what's going on with the, with the price and the whales and things like that? I'm like, I have no idea, honestly. It's it's anybody's guess, To but uh, I can tell you what I think is going on. I don't think it's a big whale thing, and we're gonna talk about that right now. So Bitcoin drops by 7% in the hour after breaking 12,000 bucks. So what's going on? So a week after Bitcoin's $10,000 resurgence, which was nice, by the way, Bitcoin's price dropped by over a grand, an 8% drop in just an hour. And I actually tweeted this. I said, hey, I would love to see traditional market players come, come in this space or investors and try to have uh, the cojones to deal with an 8% drop in an hour. And I, I said it was like 10%, about 10% in like 10 minutes. That's what it looked like to me people would lose their minds. You have to have ice in your veins to look at that and go, man, eh, that's a Sunday. I mean, some people would call that a catastrophe. I just call that today. And that's just how it is because, uh, you know, we've lived through it so much, we're steeled. And uh, that's just how it goes. Anyhow, when it, we're talking about these pullbacks, because it states here only a few hours before this dump, Bitcoin had broken the $12,000 ceiling. Let me read that again. Only a few hours before this dump, Bitcoin had broken the $12,000 ceiling. The last time Bitcoin was priced over 12K was August 2019 when it fell all the way to 7,000. I don't know what happened with that one, but I can tell you what's happened here. I believe, because even I had a sell order at 10,000, I had totally forgotten about it. It was just on the, one of the books and it had triggered when Bitcoin hit 10,000. I was like, why do I have 100 bucks in my Voyager uh, wallet? And sure, sure enough, <laughs> There was a hundred bucks because I put a, a sell order in all those times ago, a limit order. So I think that's what's happening here. Every time you see 11,000, 12,000, 30, all the way up to 20,000, you're going to see a pullback. And it's part of the reason, not the whole reason, obviously, but part of the reason is people like to use round numbers. They just do. I still do, uh, obviously, but I'm trying to get away from that. Um, so when you see like a $12,000 point, People are going to sell at 12,000 because like, I'm going to sell at 12,000. I'm going to sell at 13 and 14 and so on and so forth. And then you have, you know, everybody talks about the gap. There's, you know, there's the gap to fill the gap for all the different orders and things like that. Sure. Yes, you got to do that too. And then of course there's, there are whales out there that, that manipulate, but I don't think that's what happened here. And we're going to talk about that right now. So moving down, it says beginning on July 22nd, the price began to resurge and it was a nice day that day. Positive news of banking, cryptocurrency, custody solutions. Uh, being given the green light by U.S. regulators. That was one. A steady increase of money inflow into the Bitcoin markets. And that's two. And the price began to slowly increase. And the reason I think of all this different increase that it's going on, it's the same reason gold is, is increasing. It's, it's hitting its all-time high. It's because people are scared of the monetary policy going on throughout the world. There is so much quantitative easing and printing of money. People are like, we can't keep doing this. This doesn't make any sense. We have to have some kind of hard asset or hard, some, some type of hard crypto, or hard cryptocurrency, hard currency that we can rely on. And guess what, what they can do? You can rely on gold, been around for thousands of years, tens of thousands, and we can rely on Bitcoin. Because even though it's only 10 years old, uh, it's still proven, us, or proven itself already. And it's finite, it's decentralized, no government owns it, so they can't manipulate it. I mean, whales can manipulate a little bit, but not so much. And uh, look, it used to be, you know, a couple bucks. Now we're here sitting around 11,000. So um, the reason why things are going up is because of what's going on globally and the fiscal policy. That's what I believe, or at least part of the reason. Anyhow, it goes on to state that last week's 10,000 move was unlikely to be a result of a whale move as there were no reports of a larger buy order placed above the trading, trading price of Bitcoin and was gauged to be an organic breakout from a period of low volatility. And you can see here that there is a problem with shorts because people love to play the market. They love to short it. They go, you know what? Bitcoin's not going to make it. I can guarantee it. And they short, they have a short position. And guess what? They all get liquidated. So uh, trading's not my thing. I'm just an investor. I like to just sit around and just put my money in and that's it because I don't have the stomach or the patience for anything else. And uh, yeah, as far as shorts go, let's break into that article. So moving on. 
exchange outages during the Bitcoin crashes. Why? And uh, this is nothing new if you're in the space. So the article states, in addition to Binance going haywire, other exchanges also faced a few abnormal incidents, incidences with today's Bitcoin drop. FTX users were among those exchanges that experienced slippage and ADLs. On FTX, users were unable to put up trades or modify existing orders with some experiencing untriggered stops and unnecessary ADLs. The drop that took a few minutes liquidated about a billion dollars worth of positions. A billion. That's crazy. And this is from, from somebody who got stuck and caught in a loop. He says, this is one of the S's times possible to have FTX official go down, like literally the volatility of lifetime, but I can't close some of my shorts. This is annoying AF. FTX is CEO and co-founder SBF. That's the name. Uh, I guess they don't want to taste something. Was quick to tweet that there were no big wicks or crazy liquidations, which is true. I mean, if you think of like, not oh, just a billion dollars here and there, not a big deal. Well, it's a big deal for a commie full-time trader, which doesn't sound too commie right now. But I mean, you, you get my point. Like, even though it's not like some like wipe out of like, you know, 100 billion or something like that, it's still a big deal to people. So make sure that you work. I mean, we put our money in the exchanges. All you got to do, you're charging us, right? All these different, different fees and whatever else. Just make sure you work. You had one job. And you mess that up. So uh, that's why I'm very finicky with, uh, with exchanges and whatnot. They just, they just annoy the heck out of me. And uh, if, if, you're new to the, if you're new to the game and you need some type of uh, uh, help as far as like uh, what exchanges to use, I have a list. It's in, in the description of every one of my videos. It's going to look like this. And it's a link to my Google spreadsheet. And I have everything here from uh, Coinbase, Coinbase Pro, Celsius, Voyager, Gemini, Binance, Uphold, Abra, SimpleSwap, uh, eToro, and Crypto.com. And these are all the ones that I have used or am using right now or am evaluating. I pretty much just break it all down by like, here's the, here's the fees, here's the rates, here's if you're going to you know, get a loan or if it's going to be you want to invest into something like that or the interest rates. Here's everything that you need to know. And then um, this just helps you out. If you're new, just use Coinbase. It's just super simple. I mean, Voyager, I think, is just as simple, but whatever. Um, Another thing is that uh, if you want to sign up, you can go right to the website. That's fine. Just you can go right to you know Celsius dot or Celsius dot network, I think it is, and then Gemini dot com, or whatever, and you can sign up. Or you can sign up. You can use my affiliate links, and you can get ten bucks or twenty five bucks or whatever else it is. So it's up to you. Go bananas. But uh, if you want some help as far as like which one to actually use, check out the spreadsheet. It helps a lot. All right. So moving down, while everything seems to have returned to normal, this isn't the first time this has happened, March 2020, so one of the most brutal drops in Bitcoin's history, the price dropped 50 to 60%. I remember that day, it was just awesome. And prices went from 9,000 to $3,800. And side note, if you bought it at 3,800, congratulations, I did not. I bought it around 45 or 5,000 or something like that, but I was, I was like, it's gonna go lower, and of course I was wrong. But uh, if you got it at 3,800, around 4,000, great job. Lastly, it states BitMEX suffered an outage uh, back in this time too. It says that many users uh, referred to it as a shutdown to prevent the price from cascading lower with panic sellers dumping the Bitcoin. However, BitMEX stated that, no, that wasn't it. It was a DDoS attack. So it's always interesting to me that uh, all these places are like, no, no, no. I mean, I know there was some huge volatility and and it just happened at that point, but it was a DDoS attack or some kind of scam or something like that. It wasn't us, it was somebody else. So, sure. But on a side note, or on a main note, I guess, um, and Coinbase wasn't uh, a part of this outage. So, congratulations, Coinbase. You did your job. I'm really happy for you. Nah, but seriously, good job, Coinbase. I, I, I gave them a ton of flack because I was so ticked off because they, they, they went down three times and it. It cost a lot of people some money and they were pretty upset. So, hey, maybe they fixed everything and uh, that's what it's all about. So if that's the case, tip my hat. Thank you, Coinbase. Let's move on. Next up, Zeus Capital doubles down on Chainlink pump and dump. I'm sure you guys have seen this around or you've seen this around um, some type of report by a place called Zeus Capital LLP and they have been saying that Chainlink is just a huge scam and, and it's going to go to zero and it's, uh, I'll let you be the judge. Anyhow. Zeus Capital LLP has released a new report reiterating its earlier stance that Chainlink is a giant pump and dump scheme. Now, before we go on, full disclosure, here's what I invested in. So I've got Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Chainlink, 
Cardano, EOS, Tezos, and Stellar. So when I talk about these things, I'm biased because I own them. I try not to be, but it sneaks in there every so often, just like probably right now. Anyhow, in this uh, article, it states, in what it now terms part one of its expose, Zeus Capital asserts in the latest report that the over 140 partnerships, let me, let me read that again, over 140 partnerships announced by Chainlink so far are an exaggeration. Listen, I don't care if you said, I got 140 partnerships, but you only got 80. That's still pretty good. I'll be honest with you. I'll take that. The asset management firm contends the project has been created to enrich the founders. Second of all, again, this could be me being biased, but isn't that the whole point of working? To enrich yourself, help your family, help your friends, get some money, take care of people? Or are you just doing it for free? I don't know. Maybe they're doing it for free, but maybe they're not. Maybe they're doing it to enrich themselves, I would guess. And to shore this up, Zeus Capital, LLP, which some Twitter users have linked to Nexo Finance, again, don't know if that's true, admits that Chainlink's core proposition is to connect APIs with blockchains, and so a pretty good number of legacy players can easily be involved. That makes sense. So this is why I invested in Chainlink. Chainlink, to me, is like the companies that um, supplied the prospectors in the 1800 gold rush. Everybody was went out to California to find gold. You had thousands upon thousands of people, and they all want to make you know hit it rich with gold. So there was these stores that would set up and go, look, we're not going to look for gold, but what we can do is we can give you pickaxes, we can give you pans, we can give you all these different screens, so you can find gold. And like, oh, okay. So the people who really got rich, it wasn't all the people who were looking for gold. I mean, some did, not all of them, but the ones that really did make it was the ones that su that supplied the prospectors. And that to me is kind of like Chainlink. They're like, look, you want to do smart contracts? Cool. Uh, you know, you know, you have uh, Ethereum and Cardano and Tezos and everything else out there. So you guys do, knock yourself out. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, give you an API to be able to pull in outside data. So you can pull in prices and weather and all the stuff that you want to do. Uh, but, you know, we're going to supply that to each and every one of these smart contract platforms. Sounds good? Sounds good. You guys are it. That's why I invested in the chain link. So, uh, we will see. Anyhow, finishing up, smart contract and the people behind Chainlink are taking it from there, loudly announcing how a big tech company's name is eager to do business with them, argues Zeus Capital LLP. This is done to show up the price of Link. So here's the example. Tell me if I'm wrong. So to support this claim, Zeus Capital gives an example. When Chainlink announced the integration with Google, the price was $1.19 per Chainlink. However, when Google tweeted about the same a few hours later, the price skyrocketed to $1.93, up 62% less than 24 hours. How awful. Why would you do that? Why would you tell um, that you partnered with Google and then have Google tweet it out to verify it? Why would you do that? Let me tell you something. If Google came to me and said, hey, Digital Asset News, we really like your, your style. We're going you know, to partner with you and we're going to talk about cryptocurrency. You better believe I'm going everywhere to tell everybody. I'm telling my friends, telling my family, I'm telling everybody, look, Google is all about me. However, you have this type of thing where it's like, that's what you should never, I just don't get it. I Tell me where my logic is off in the comment section. Like I said, I am no genius, that's for sure. But uh, it'd be nice to, to see what you guys think, so let me know. And then lastly, uh, this the article's done, I'll finish off with this. Um, for somebody, this Zeus Capital, who just wants to expose the truth and be, you know, Captain Justice, uh, I find it odd that they are spending money on ads to do so. So as I was perusing through Twitter, looking up the thing with Altcoin Daily, uh, I see this, and this was in my feed. We've, we have unlimited resources to go after Link. You can't short squeeze us. You attempt to manipulate the market and blah, 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 blah. So uh, this is promoted. So they're spending money on ads on Twitter. And then that was just one of them. And here's the second one I saw. And it was like right down my feed. Uh, same thing, here's the link. Um, for the uh, different, uh, the Chainlink fraud PDF file, which, you know, t t says that Chainlink is going to zero. And, you know, you can download it, read it, and da-da-da. And that's promoted as well. So I get it. If you're trying to be Captain Justice and go out there and, like, expose the scammers, that's cool. But uh, to promote it, I mean, how bad do you want to shut these guys down? Like, I hate scams. I think everybody, I mean, you probably know that watching the channel every so often. Uh, but I'm not going to promote it. I'm not going to promote to take down scams. I mean, I do my best, but geez, Louise, calm down. So um, it just seems very fishy to me. That's all.
All right, and that's it for that section. Let me know what you think in the comments section. I don't see it as, as a scam. Uh, Chainlink works, so if it works, good enough for me. I'm happy. And next up is our question of the day. I really want to get into this because uh, it is very concerning to me. So why don't we uh, jump in my office and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, everybody, so happy Sunday and welcome back to the office. Um, this, this section uh, directly relates to the question that was asked by uh, Sean. And Sean asks, uh, does anyone know what happened to Altcoin Daily? Looks like YouTube deleted them. And if we uh, do a little quick little search for Altcoin Daily, you don't find them. Um, actually, it's two brothers, and they do pretty good work, and uh, they just do kind of like a channel just like mine. They get the news, just the news. They don't get anything crazy out there. They're not telling you to do a 1,000x leverage and go to some crazy exchange that no one's ever heard of in their lives or to do illegal gambling. They don't do any of that stuff. They just talk about the news. And um, so, yeah, if, if you do a quick search, you're not going to find them. Uh, they are deleted. They are gone. So uh, this was actually happened on Friday, I believe. And this, uh, so, so the reason that I know is because if you look at their Twitter account, um, it just says, and you can find them at Altcoin Daily, I think it's that, Altcoin Daily IO or something like that, uh, for Twitter. And it just says, that it's one of their pinned comments. And they say, hey, look, this is what happened. We got um, terminated. We didn't, we weren't notified of uh, anything beforehand. Because usually there's a three strikes out in your uh, policy and you're out. And they just said that they got uh, an email or some kind of notification that says you were doing illegal activities and we don't like that, so your channel is gone. It's, it's terminated. So there's an appeal process, which they're going to fill out and then go through that. And then a lot of people have been uh, tagging the at YouTube uh, team help, but um, that's where they're at right now. And I got to tell you, I think it's a, I think it's a, it's a shame that somebody works, and it, it's, it's two brothers out of California. It's a shame that they work so hard on their channel to build it up to where it is. And these guys do a lot of work, you know, they do a lot of work. So it's just to have somebody who's over you say, hey, you know, we don't like that and we reviewed it and you're out of here, you're gone. So, I mean, that is the nature of, of the business. Do I think it's fair? It's not fair. Uh, that's, that is how it is. And uh, that, is a, that is a real shame. So um, this isn't the first time this has happened. I don't know if, uh, if, if, if you're new to this space, this is, this is, uh, one of those, those times when uh, we can look back at history and see what has actually happened beforehand. So back in, ooh, let's take, pull this article up. This was in December 26, 2019. My man, Billy Bambra, he does, he does solid work for over there at Forbes. Uh, he talks about, hey, this, this in December 2019, which was only, what, eight months ago or so, um, Google and YouTube have what was called a, uh, it was like a crypto uh, sweep or a crypto ban for a, for a bunch of different YouTube channels. And a lot of the big YouTubers, medium-sized and even small ones, were getting eliminated. Not eliminated, but a lot of their videos were being taken down. So remember, it's a three strikes policy and you're out. So they were getting like one strike, two strikes, and, and they were all sitting on the edge of their seats going, when's the third strike coming? And it kind of sucks. So this is nothing new. Um, it's, it's new to this level that it's actually gone to like, hey, we're just going to bypass the strikes and we're going right to termination. Now, do I know that they have had any strikes? I don't know that. I have no idea. But I can tell you that I catch their show every so often. And the reason why I watch them is because they're so damn good at those thumbnails. Those thumbnails are on point. Let me tell you, everything's big news. Everything's exciting. Everything's sensationalized. You can't stop but click on that damn thumbnail. So uh, when I see these types of things go about, I'm like, oh, well. You know, I don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but the things that I watch and the things that I've seen doesn't appear to be a legal activity. And a legal activity can be anything from um, uh, abuse. Uh, it can be anything from gambling. I mean, uh, or where you could send somebody to a website that has unauthorized uh, type of whatever, like medication or whatever else. So I've never seen them where they're like, hey, go to this exchange and it's in Kazakhstan and you can get a bunch of free Bitcoin. I've never seen that. So um, I don't know, but I, I can tell you this. Um, I like doing these YouTube videos. Uh, I, I do, it's fun, it's fun stuff. You know, I get to talk to you guys, you get to see all the comment section. You tell me, uh, you know, either, uh, you know, how relevant or the, whatever the stories are that are good. And you also tell me what a, a raging moron I am and that's okay because uh, sometimes I am. <laughs> and that's just how it goes. But, uh, you know, it, it, it is a shame just to, just to think that you're going to wake up one day and all the hard work that you've done is just, it's just gone. And uh, there's nothing really you can do about it. So 
Um, the same thing happens in every industry. Every industry where you have no representation or you have nothing uh, to really shore yourself up against, if it's just a David versus Goliath, you'll never win. You'll never win. So the only way to win really is through unity. And um, I mean, I've gone through that. I've been sued by, you know, a big, big players and uh, it is never fun and it actually hurts. And even, like I said, even when you win, you lose uh, because you're spending so much money. So like with this type of situation, I have a pretty good idea of how I would handle it. And, uh, but the only thing is that um, unless YouTubers get together in some way, shape or form, uh, it will never, uh, it will never happen. So uh, I can just say this, if you are a YouTuber and you're not doing any legal activity and you uh, feel like, hey, I don't wanna wake up tomorrow and have my YouTube channel gone, then I want you to reach out to me. I want you to reach out to me. I have an idea of how to combat these things. There's ways to do these things. There's ways to not do these things. And the worst way is just to duck and cover and just hope it's not you. Because guess what? Next chance, next opportunity, it is you and your channel's gone. And then how are you going to feel when you're sitting there like altcoin daily and you got to tweet out, hey guys, my channel got deleted. So uh, hopefully I'll see you, but maybe not. Anyhow, uh, that's what I got. So again, if you're a YouTuber, uh, my email uh, is in every one of the descriptions of these videos. So just shoot me an email. We'll talk. And that's it uh, for that section. Let's uh, let's jump back. Okay, so that's it. So thanks for sticking with me through all that. Uh, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, before I sign off, just want to say thanks to everybody who signed up as a member. If you don't know, I got a, a join now button uh, underneath every one of my videos. You don't get anything special. I don't hold anything back. It's kind of like a tip. It's a buck ninety nine. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So everybody who's signed up, uh, I want to say thanks. So just do some random shout outs. Of course, the new ones, Mark Reese and Bill Ennis, Donald Francisco. Hello. Thanks for coming in. Grant Sharman, I haven't said that. Who else we got? Uh, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this name and I'm sure I'm going to destroy it. Hervolje Soic. If I got that right, let me know in the comments. I doubt it. What else we got? Uh, Sally's W. We've got uh, Sm <laughs> Smiling McDougal. I always stop at that guy. And uh, who else we got? Gary Kamir and one more, Sean Thompson. So look, thanks for everybody who signed up. I really appreciate it. If you like these types of videos, there's gonna be two that are gonna pop up on your left and right right now. I don't have any control over that. Just like I have no control over what uh, uh, ads appear before, in the middle and after my video. So if it's a scam video, sorry, I don't have any control of that. But uh, if you like those, those videos or these types of videos, click on those. That's it for today. Have a great Sunday. See you on the next one.